So what I'm going to show you today is um, an online in-browser uh, development environment uh, that I've developed specifically um, for education. So the idea is um, that um, doing a lot of development, I think, uh, requires too much software engineering expertise. Um, and yet, you know, we have to, um, I think learning to code is actually a very valuable thing to do. Uh, the way I see a computer is that it's kind of like, uh, it's, an, it's a compressor if you think of time. You can create simulations and you can see amazing things and gain amazing insights. So this is STEM C Studio. Um, it's really for anybody who's worked with say JS Fiddle, but is perhaps looking for something that uh, scales up to more interesting projects, or maybe they feel that JS Fiddle is a little bit kind of brain dead, shall we say. Um, so, or if you're maybe somebody who's um, been working with HTML and has been struggling with uh, JavaScript embedded inside script, script tags inside HTML, um, this is for you. So uh, I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of this first screen. First, we were at stemcstudio.com. You can go there. Uh, this is free code. I intend to keep it that way for all times. I don't want any barriers to learning for people. Um, and uh, so that's the way that's going to be. Everything that you create in STEMC Studio, potentially you can save and you save it in GitHub. So I'm going to log in right now in the top right hand corner is this button for logging in. And I just happen to already be sort of signed in the background STEMC Studio as my uh, uh, profile. So um, I'm logged in there. All right, let's go straight to uh, straight to it. Well, at the top of the screen, before we go there, um, there is an examples button. And from the examples button, you can see many examples. Some of them are very, very simple at the beginning using P5, um, but they get more interesting. We've got some WebGL graphics going on here. Um, we've even got ray tracing in the browser. That's kind of fun to do. Um, more 3D WebGL graphics. This is a mathematical library that I developed, uh, which uh, is designed to um, display geometric algebra and, and present that. Um, we have, of course, uh, the classic 3GS library. Uh, JSX graph makes an appearance, and there are plenty of examples of JSX graph in here. Uh, moving on down, we've got examples that use the GPU. That's very interesting, parallelizing uh, code. We've got some physics examples in here. Physics is my background, mathematics and physics, units of measure some statistical type stuff, and a bit of chemistry at the bottom. So apparently, because of the way I've sized this, I'm gonna to have to go to the top to get back. Oops. So let's get back to our main screen. So well, let's dive into this. So I'm gonna take you back two days to uh, Igor's workshop, where Igor basically presented a, um, a program um, that uh, just, uh, I think, well, I'll show you the construction. Here it is. So here we are, we have the program on the left, we have the program executing on the right. And if you go to the top, we can hide the code, we can show the code, hide the code, we can pop up a readme file. And so we're now in a sort of a presentation show and tell kind of mode uh, that uh, a student might want to be in. We can bring the code back. Um, on the left hand side here, we have the files in the project. As you can see, there are um, multiple files in the project. Um, and so this is basically a full featured development environment, but really made very, very simple for students. Now I'm going to show you how it's a little bit different from just your ordinary JavaScript um, program. So this should look amazingly similar to what um, Igor presented a few days ago. I'm going to show you some differences. The first is I can hover over um, an item and get in browser documentation. So that is happening because the code that you're actually looking at is actually TypeScript. It's not JavaScript. Now, don't be afraid of TypeScript because if you know JavaScript or if you're learning JavaScript, it's really no big deal. Essentially, it's really just JavaScript with a few extra optional type annotations thrown in. In fact, you can't even see the type annotations 
in this program because they aren't necessary. The program can infer them. So for example, if I hover over the board, leave my mouse there, I hover over the board, it can tell that it's a jxg.board. Okay, I didn't need to have to tell it that, it, it knew. Uh, we can go into here and if I just backspace at that point and press a period, I get auto completion. And so now I can actually, you know, select uh, things. Um, some other examples, um, I have a multi-module project. So, so in addition to um, just this file, I can be bringing in definitions from another file. And so I've actually used this in, in this example to keep the styling in a separate file. And then I bring that styling in at the top. Now, one of the interesting things is when you're importing modules in this way, uh, if I have my cursor there and I hit control spacebar, it will actually pop up the things that I'm allowed to import. So I will just bring those two back in there. You see, I've made a little bit of a mess there. Oh, no problem. I'm just going to hit the format document command and it tidies everything up. Okay, so that's um, some, of the, uh, some of the things that you can do uh, with, um, by having TypeScript. Another thing that I think is really important is I like to think the tool is like a pencil and that this pencil shouldn't get in the way of your mind kind of, you know, looking at a piece of paper. Um, the tool shouldn't get in the way. It should enable, it should work at the speed that you want to sort of think at. So some of the features that are really important <clears throat> are the ability to rename variables. So let's say, for example, I have this variable here and I want to rename it. I can rename it to say BRD1. Oops, I think I've got my caps lock on. BRD1. Hit enter. And you see it's actually renamed it at every point. And that rename is not a syntax, that's not a, a textual rename. That's actually because the program knows where this board is at every point in the program. Okay. You can do something similar with files. You can rename files. I won't show that, but you can rename files. It will fix up the imports and so forth. So what I hope is that this environment can make development for people who are using things like JS Fiddle and so forth, much more pleasurable. Okay, so let's kind of come out of this one and just, I wanna show you something else. So Jesse code came up yesterday. And uh, so I thought it would be fun just to kind of like see if I can uh, run some Jesse code in uh, STEMC Studio. And it was actually remarkably easy to do. Um, so I'm gonna run it right now. And there is uh, the Jesse code that is actually in this file. So we've got my code .jesse. I I've given my Jesse code an extension .jesse. <clears throat> and uh, the way this works is actually very simple. Um, STEMC Studio has a kind of convention that certain kinds of files um, with, with interesting extensions like comma separated value files, um, WebGL shader programs, that kind of thing. They are inserted into the HTML, the output HTML. And so a little bit of sort of serendipity happens here. That just happens to be what JSX Graph does to um, bring um, the diagram into the, into the uh, board. Um, so that kind of like just worked out, you know, really easily. Now it's, it's an interesting philosophical problem <clears throat> whether using Jesse code is actually any simpler than TypeScript. And I know that um, there is gonna be some people who, who think, yeah, Jesse code, it really is. It's kind of like less busy. Uh, but I, actually, I think that we should think about this kind of carefully and I'm gonna kind of give you a counter example to that. So this program is actually the template program that I provide um, for JSX Graph. So it's a sort of starting point. And um, you'll notice here that it looks a little bit different than, uh, I'll just prove that it runs. Uh, you'll notice that it looks a little bit different than the program that Igor presented. In fact, in that you don't see all of these kind of create things going on. Um, and that's because I've created a little wrapper API, specific to this program, but a little wrapper API around the um, JXG API which is designed to make, the, make the, um, the API a little bit more approachable for humans. Whereas I think the, um, the lower level API of um, JSX Graph was perhaps more designed for use uh, in, in tools, you know, like sketchometry and that kind of thing. Um, so I'll give you a, a very quick 
show of how this works. If we jump over to the JXG file, um, I will use the code folding here just to fold everything up. And basically we have a board uh, object, which is going to be a wrapper around, um, I'll just drop an example out. It's gonna be a wrapper around the calls to JXG underneath. But the difference is, and I'll just expand this one too. The difference is that I have now very well-defined arguments to my particular methods. Uh, and as you will see later in, in my final presentation, this, this really helps the TypeScript compiler figure out what's going on, okay? So, you know, let's see, see also how that, that impacts me when I'm back in the editor. So say for example, that I actually want to add something to my diagram. You'll see that if I just press the period, I have all the add options available to me. Okay, and I can pick, you know, select the, the, the one that I want and, uh, and add it. So I, I think this is something that now makes um, using TypeScript um, more attractive than uh, perhaps using um, the, the Jesse code. Um, but of course, you know, everybody to their own. Now, what I'm gonna do for the, so for the final part of this um, demonstration is actually, I'm just gonna walk through a couple of the features. We've already seen uh, a couple of features in the toolbar here, the hiding the editor and the showing of the editor. This is how you stop a program and you launch a program. This toggles the documentation. And by the way, the documentation is just this readme file over here. Okay, and you'll notice that, um, I can't see it because I'm like, little pellets in the way. Uh, you'll notice that we do support MathJax um, and uh, MathJax is available to you uh, in the code. Okay. Um, yeah, so this, this basically what's, what's over in the readme file over here is just the reflection of, um, of what's in the readme file over here. So this is kind of, you know, sort of an ideal way for uh, a student or a, an educator perhaps to uh, document their program. Um, as you would do if you were a, a professional software engineer, um, I just made it easy to do. Uh, let me show you a few more features. Um, we have a cloud menu, as I said, I'm signed on to GitHub and uh, I can automatically upload this file to GitHub. And it says your project was successfully uploaded and it patched the existing gist. So my code is safely stored in GitHub and that's something I believe in. I believe that your code is your portfolio and uh, it belongs to you. It shouldn't be in some obscure database uh, in some project. So you can, you can get that anytime. Uh, you can also download your existing projects from GitHub, um, which is kind of like convenient. Now, there's also the edit, edit preferences. I won't go into that, but it just basically it's theming. You can have a light colored theme if you want. I think this is more interesting. There is an embedding builder. The embedding builder uh, enables you to um, build the string that um, can be used to embed STEMC Studio, uh, perhaps in your Moodle, perhaps in your website, wherever you want it to be. Um, you have options to select the files that you're interested in working with. Um, like I want to show index.ts as my main file, the one that's running, I want to be index.html documentation. And you can also customize it. You might want to hide the branding, the STEMC studio or the console, the description, uh, various buttons, that kind of thing. Uh, once you've done that, you just copy it copies it to the clipboard and I'll give an example. I can just paste it in here. Let's see if I can do it with this Mac keyboard. So I just pasted in there and let's go and take a look uh, at the readme. Hide the code, I'll stop it running. And actually, so here's STEMC Studio running in embedded mode in the website, um, which happens to be a readme file. Okay, let's go back, I'll take that out. Delete key on my keyboard. Try that. Um, okay, so if you're a slightly more um, sophisticated developer, you may be interested to know that um, STEMT Studio is very standards based. And um, one of the things that you can do is you can actually show the files that are used to configure the project. So I've just unchecked the uh, high configuration files. And if I say okay, you'll notice that a few extra files 
um, appear in the workspace. These are files that you wouldn't normally want to show to a beginning developer, but um, they're there. And you can see here, this is a standard um, package.json file. Um, you can see how it uh, knows that it should be bringing in JX, JSX graph. And I'll show you how this is, can actually be um, changed without manually changing it. We also have files that configure the TypeScript compilation and there's linting and we'll see, and we'll see you know, what those things are in the final demonstration. Now, I'll just go back to that project settings and you, know, you may be wondering how does it know to bring in JSX graph? Well, it's, it happens like this. Um, you'll find the dependencies and I can specify the version of JSX graph that I want. If I don't want JSX graph, I just click the blank. But if I do want it, I select its version 1.1.0 and the program defaults in <clears throat> what it's going to allow as upgrades. So these are mine changes. So that, that would affect the, you would be allowing the patch, the, uh, the, the minor version number to increase. So I would be accepting 1.2, 1.3 and so forth. You might also decide that you want to only want to accept patches, which would be changes to this number. So that would be a more conservative, protect you against changes more. Um, or you might want an exact version. You just leave it as blank. And another option is just give me the latest um, in which case the version number is not relevant. I think in pragmatic senses, um, this is the normal default in, in, pack, in package JSON. You take a version and you trust semantic versioning that nobody's gonna introduce a breaking change. If I were an educator, I would be inclined to, to, to maybe even go for an exact because I just don't want my program to ever break and I don't want to have to visit it. So that just explains how this dialogue works. Um, if you hover over most of the links, uh, it can take you to um, the web page um, where there is useful documentation. Okay, let's, uh, I'll leave it back as minor. Okay, um, I think that just about covers it. Um, I'm at, well, I say I'm at 13 minutes. I think I started my clock a little bit late. Um, I'm gonna go into a live code demo at this point. Um, do we still have time? Is, is everybody good? I think I think that may be the case. Okay, oh, so okay. you have five minutes. And that's no problem. <laughs> excellent. Let's see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, on the JSX Graph website, uh, there is this um, program called Riemann Sum, and uh, I'm going to port this into STEMC Studio. So I'm going to do that. Hit Control um, hit Control C, Command C. I'll go back to STEMC Studio. And I'm gonna hit the code now button. Now I could have pasted this into an existing project and just copied the project, um, that's possible. But I'm just gonna start um, with this dialog. There are a number of templates built in, in here and there's a nice JSX graph template. So I'll call this uh, conference demo. And this is where my typing skills really get displayed and they're not good. So the conference demo, as I said, uh, is, is this one that you've already seen before. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to just select that and I'm going to paste in the, um, the code that I just got from the, uh, the JSX Graph website. Now, you'll see automatically, because STEMC Studio is basically a sort of very intelligent, aware editor, that's telling me a number of things. Um, these things aren't just needed. Um, so, but never mind. Let's kind of like go down to the console in the right hand corner and saying JSRex graph, the HTML container element box one was not found. Box one, of course, is, is this guy here. And if we look at the HTML, we can see the reason for that is that we should have used box. So I'll come back and I'll change that to box. And we're live coding here. So, oh, they're great. So um, the, uh, the, the code is back with us. Okay. Um, and now we're really just in the mode of actually kind of like fixing some of these um, problems and uh, cleaning up the code. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, I'm just going to comment those out. I might want them later. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to stop it running now so I can see a little bit more screen real estate. Okay, what's the problem here? I'll just hover over it. It says, 
basically it's saying that it doesn't know what bounding box is. And it says, did you mean bounding with a capital B box? Now, I think the interesting thing about JSX graph is it's actually case insensitive, I think, on, on attributes. Um, uh, but rather than present every possible combination, I had to make a decision about what I was going to allow. And I just decided that, you know, I've seen some examples with, with a sort of a, a camel case. So um, I think I'm going to go, go for that. Okay, what's this one we're at? Parameter X implicitly has the any type. Well, this is basically um, the uh, TypeScript compiler telling me that it wants to know the type of everything in the program and it just can't figure this one out. Now, I can actually turn that off. Uh, I don't think that's a good way to set the options. I can turn it off in the program through the files, the configuration files, but instead I'm just gonna show you how you fix that problem. You tell it that the type of the variable X is a number and it's happy, the, the, uh, the, the problem went away. Okay, what about this one? Plot is declared, but its value is never read. Well, that's pretty easy. It's basically saying this is a variable that you never use. So we'll just get rid of that. What about this one? OS is declared, but its value is never read. Same old thing, get rid of that. Okay, and now we're down here. I have to move this little window out of the way so I can see what's going on. Okay, and um, actually we've kind of caught a bug here. Um, so I'm gonna hover my mouse over here. Property value does not exist on left. So this is, um, Alfred, sorry, caught you out here. Um, this shouldn't be like that. Uh, that's going to result in an undefined for that parameter. And I guess the reason why it works is because if it's undefined, it probably defaults to left or something like that. So I'm gonna remove it and hey presto, we're good. Oh, uh, well, we're not quite good. Okay, something else has happened. And what's happened here is that the linting has kicked in. Okay, so if I hover over, now I decided to, to support um, linting because I think it makes the programs, your programs tidier um, and more understandable for students. I happen to have a setting that says, um, I don't want semicolons. Um, and I actually believe as a developer that, um, that semicolon inference uh, in JavaScript should be used. Um, I've never had a case where I burned myself by not using stem semicolon inference. Now, rather than actually remove all these, um, the good news is, uh, I'll move this thing, my thing out of the way again so I can get to it. Um, I can hit the format again and all the semicolons get removed, which is kind of like rather nice because it knows that I don't want semicolons, okay? If you set it the other way, then um, it will put semicolons in. Okay, finally, uh, what's going on here? We'll just hover over that. Well, it's basically taking us into um, uh, JavaScript, modern JavaScript and saying, we don't really use the var keyword anymore. We use let or const. Okay, so that's pretty easy to get rid of. I'm just gonna select that. Now I happen to know the keyboard combinations um, for, um, for STEMC Studio, but if you click that little keyboard icon, I'll just go and show you that again, this keyboard shortcuts, it'll pop up um, the shortcuts. And uh, the combination I'm gonna use here is Control Alt K, I hope. Yes, that's a multi-select, very useful. Whoops, went too far. And I'm just gonna type in const because I believe none of these variables um, and the escape key I'm gonna head to, none of these variables actually required. So we're actually in pretty good shape. Let's just make sure that um, it still runs. Indeed it does. Um, and I've maybe got one minute left. So I just wanna show you this. Um, so is everything working at this point? Well, I'm gonna do a quick check. I'm just gonna hover over um, some of the APIs here. I'm gonna hover over the create for the slider and you'll see that the element type says slider. And in fact, if I hover over the S, you can see it says slider. Let's do the same for the function graph. It's function graph. Okay, what about the ream and sum? Uh-oh, the ream and sum actually doesn't know what's going on. And this gets back to that kind of wrapper API that I was talking about in the previous slide. Um, the, the, the low level API here for JSX graph is not really the best API if, if, if JSX graph is trying to figure out what's going on. But actually there's a bug being obscured here. And um, if you look at this line here where we've got the, uh, the function and left, that of course is really gonna return undefined. Um, and uh, you know, this thing is actually doing nothing. So 
what should be what should be going on here is so I should be returning left. And now if I hover over um, my uh, create, it's, uh, it's correctly identified Riemann sum. But I should point out something. Okay, let's take a look at this guy here. I'm gonna type lefty, okay? Because Alfred knows how to make typos. And if we hover over here, it says argument type, it's not applicable to the type Riemann sum. And if you wanna know what the type Riemann sum is, you can actually go in to the, well, I'll do it right now. We can go into the JSX graph file and uh, here's the type, these are the type definitions and here's Riemann, Riemann, type, tum, Riemann sum type. And it knows that it should be one of these things, okay? So it actually detected it correctly over here. But what about over here? What if I put lefty over here? Well, hmm, it doesn't do it. You know, it's gone, it's the same old problem is that TypeScript isn't able to do, able to do a correct uh, inference here. So this is where, it, again, it comes back to that wrapper API. If I'd had a, a wrapper API here, those kind of problems wouldn't have been allowed. Okay, I think that's pretty much gonna wrap it up. I might be over a little bit. Um, STEMC Studio is a state of the art in browser program. I hope you'll try it if you're a, a, JS, a JS Fiddle user, if you do, if you struggled with um, JavaScript and HTML, uh, whether you're a beginner, uh, experienced a researcher, uh, student, um, I think it's got something for you. I, I hope you, you'll agree with me. Um, and, um, and that's it. I'm, I'm going to skip over the futures and, and, unless people want to talk about that in the discussion.